Fight with your feet, not your arms. Greetings, adventurers. My name is Kramer, and today we are using The Rings of Power Season 1, Episode 5, uh, the fight between Galadriel and the Numenorean recruits as a jumping off point to discuss how a fight can, or rather should, influence the story. And if you're looking for me to completely re-choreograph the fight, I hate to disappoint you. Um, but one, I can't do that because I'm just one guy in his tree. Uh, but two, the solution is actually so much more simple than that, and that almost makes it way worse. <laughs> so what I'm going to ask of you is that we suspend our disbelief here for the sake of this video, because I do think that there are very good examples in this fight for, for us to have this discussion. So we have to uh, sort of turn a blind eye and proceed under the premise that Galadriel is there and she is going to train the Numenorians, And I have simply been hired as a choreographer or a consultant for this fight. Uh, and I have very little say in the overall story or the script as it is written. It would simply be my job to deliver on the vision of the director whether or not I personally agreed with it. And we're gonna just show how this could have been done. So now that we're on the same page, I'd like to share with you another quote from the Swordmaster Bob Anderson. This is again from the Appendices, Disc 4. In the Two Towers, it's under Filming the Two Towers, The Warriors of the Third Age. Bob Anderson says here, a lot of people think that when you're doing a fight, it's just about knowing a little bit about swordplay, and then you go clonk, 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 parry, repost, parry, repost, parry, repost, run here, jump there, do this, do that, but it isn't. To me, any sort of fight has its own story within the main story. Choreography is not just about the swordplay, it is not just about memorizing the sequence of the moves. The way the choreography is performed is how that story is told and it relies on the story itself to actually exist behind it. We can block on five, right? But there is a difference between just blocking on five because you're supposed to, blocking on five because there's a really hard incoming strike coming in. Choreography is a tool. It helps to tell a story. You have to know what the story is in order to choreograph something correctly. And I would like to add my own uh, little caveat to this, that sometimes there are actually three stories being told. There is the story of the actual choreography, right? Who is winning, who is losing, who is in peril, who is not, who is the hero. Then there is the story of the scene that the choreography is happening in. And then there's the overarching main story of the show or movie or whatever. And when we're very lucky, all of those things come together in harmony and tell the same story. So the moves that are done are not necessarily the thing that have to change. Sometimes it is simply the way that that move is performed. We can look at the Rings of Power here. At the very end cut, um, I think his name is Valendil. I'm not sure. He's a made-up character. It doesn't matter. Uh, he stabs at Galadriel, who blocks his sword like this behind her. Although I'm mirrored to the show, so I'm, I'm on the wrong side. But she blocks the sword behind her like this, which is not a stable position. Um, She's dual wielding, so it would have been easy for her to turn and block the sword here. So the way that this is choreographed does make it seem as if she let him win or didn't know that this would block or something like that. But it all, but the way she's standing is so strong that it makes it look like she thought she was going to block that attack because she's, she's very well positioned. So I, I'm actually confused what the story there is supposed to be, because on the one hand, she's blocking it very confidently, which would indicate that she thinks that she's going to be able to stop this strike, um, but it still hits her anyway. But the way that he is stabbing at her, he's like in this, he's in this very open position, he's almost leaning back a little bit, and it makes it seem as if he's either afraid of the sword or afraid of what she's gonna do, or isn't confident in this attack, which means he shouldn't be making it. So that, that, that exchange, that one move, could stay exactly the same and just be performed differently. The difference between stabbing her like this, as, as if he's not sure if it's actually gonna work or not, and stabbing her, I'll use my left hand even though I'm not left-handed, and stabbing her like this, where he's forward and he's putting, he's putting his energy into it. He's not off balance, he's not overextended, but he's like, I see an opening, she's not facing me, she's distracted, I got this. That is a very different story. And then if she changes her stance, if she's here blocking, if she hears him and like just turns and he, and then he gets her, he hits her, he hits her sword, but it still gets her. 
that tells a different story too, because there's a difference between this, I got you, and so this is where we encounter our first problem with this training sequence in the Rings of Power, and that is that the story of the scene and the story of the choreography are actually incongruent. So when I said in my last video that the choreography of the scene tells the wrong story, the choreography exists in a vacuum because you could take that choreography and copy and paste it and then change any one of the characters to a different character and that same choreography would work for any other scene in any other story with any other characters in any other show. And that means that the choreography isn't tied to the characters that are in it or the story that it's in. And that is a huge problem. So let's talk about the story of the scene first. If we were to boil this down, if, if, if we had to say in one sentence, what is the story of this scene? Galadriel is training the Numenorean recruits to fight orcs. That is the story. So what is the logical conclusion? What is the consequence of that story? What happens at the end? The logical conclusion would be that either the Numenorean recruits get better, or the Numenorean recruits get worse or don't improve. And then there are consequences uh, because of those things. As it is presented in the show, the scene begins with Elendil asking Galadriel to help train his troops to fight orcs. But with the introduction of the prize, that if one of them beats her, they will get promoted, this changes the context of the fight so that the objective is not to learn anything or train, but rather just to beat her. And the question becomes whether or not the Numenoreans will successfully beat Galadriel and become promoted. When the question of the fight, should come from whether or not the Numenorians will learn something from her and get better. Because when you have a story that is about a master teaching pupils, who is the focal point of that of that story? It's the pupils. Because the, the, the point of that story is that the pupils are learning something. So it should be told from their point of view. As it is in the Rings of Power, I think the, the fight choreography and the scene accidentally tell the story of a swordsman who is supposedly very competent but is a terrible terrible teacher because Galadriel uses her mastery over the blade essentially just to rub it in that she's better than all of the other recruits and that is because we don't see the recruits actually get better throughout the fight one of them just sort of wins by accident because the scene is shot as if it's about her and even then if the story was just supposed to be about her being epic it fails at that too because of who she's fighting. She's fighting people that are established as needing to learn from her. So they're inherently worse than her. So of course she's beating them. When you are a teacher of something, it is your responsibility to make sure that the student actually learns what you're trying to teach them. They didn't come to you so that you can prove how epic you are because then what's gonna happen is they're just gonna go, yes, I know that you know this. That is why I came to you. Can we proceed with the learning now? I am constantly on the search for new skills to learn in order to add to my video making arsenal. Now I'm only one man, but I want to have a production style that makes it seem like I have a whole team behind me, and there is an absolute lot to cover. But that's why I really appreciate the structure of Skillshare, because a good teacher with a well thought out lesson plan will tell you everything that you need to know and answer questions that you didn't even know you had before you even thought to ask them, so that you can spend your time just learning rather than figuring out what it is that you need to learn in the first place. I've been working through the course Motion Cap Capture Animation by Lucas Ridley because I want to know more about 3D modeling. Now I probably should have started with a beginner course because I have no clue what I'm doing yet. Man, it's so complicated. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. The first 1,000 people to use my special link in the description will get one month free so you can explore classes on filmmaking, character illustration, creative writing. The search for knowledge is endless. So check out Skillshare with the link below in the description and a huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video. In fact, a really good example is if we look at the training sequence in The Mask of Zorro with the fight between Anthony Hopkins and Antonio Banderas. It is simply how the choreography is performed differently that shows the progression of this. And then it's intercut to give us some characterization, some character development, some interpersonal relationship development between the two characters. And then the training sequence ends with the juxtaposition between Antonio Banderas uh, swinging the sword around wildly and then immediately getting disarmed, which is funny. There is comedy in it. And then the, look at the change in his stance. Look at the change in how competently he fights. And then of course there is the change in the speed. So a very simple way to fix this is just to change the viewpoint of the fight. Give each one of the students uh, hero moments or character moments where they have their own individual shots, um, where they are not just reacting, but, but actually learning something, right? So you would have uh, the fight happening 
and some of the recruits in the background who aren't taking part in it yet but are like preparing their attack can have a moment where they they change their guard right they see something that one of their compatriots tried that didn't work and then they try to do something else and then we can see through the the movement on the screen that oh they're they're tr they are trying to flank here rather than the focus point just being about galadriel and she can be shouting things at them and directing them and praising them when they do something good throughout the entire fight, give her a little bit more dialogue. Like, be aware of your surroundings. My flank is open. Surround me. Strike now. Good. Stuff like that so that there is there's more of a rapport. And humanizing the students that way also serves the purpose of now now that we have invested time in them we uh, the main character galadriel has invested time in them and we've invested in the story of them improving then it matters a lot more what happens to them so then it can be used later and then that also helps characterize galadriel better because she is being shown to be a supportive uh teacher and not just someone who is wanting to show off all of her fancy skills another thing that we should be doing here is using the actual dialogue that is in the scene as sparse as it is at the moment to justify the choreography that is happening or use the choreography to justify the lines so we'll just use this as an example uh at one point in the fight galadriel ends up behind uh one of the characters and she says fight with your feet not with your arms and i wouldn't have a problem with that if it were justified in the choreography so she is she is behind uh this character and it would make more sense for her sword to be like in front of him like this, because if it's behind, you know, he can just, there's no pressure, you know, there's there's no force that can be exerted. So the most you can do is like slice at him and he's wearing some gambeson it looks like, but whatever. So if she says that line, fight with your feet, not with your arms in that position, it is perfectly logical for him to go, oh, and then stamp on her back foot. And it's so obvious, like that is why you have lines like that. It was so obvious to me that that is what should have happened that I was literally surprised when it didn't because it just makes so much sense. And I get what they were going for. This line is there for Galadriel to teach the new recruits about the importance of footwork. And footwork is important, it just doesn't work for the fight because the choreography doesn't show their footwork actually improving. And adding this little bit in serves as a character moment for Valendiel so that he can show how clever he is and that he's capable of learning something new even though it wasn't what Galadriel intended. Another example would be when she said, says, uh, don't plant roots, keep moving. Both of these lines about footwork, again, aren't justified by the choreography. And what I mean by that is there's no reason for her to say them, because even if the footwork is poor, it's not like the it's not like the recruits are fighting as if they're glued to the ground. They are moving. They are trying to get around here. They're running around. They're actually moving too much. They're stumbling all over the place. So there's no reason for her to say don't plant roots, except for the fact that in this fight she swings her sword and it ends up behind this guy, and he stops dead in his tracks as if the fact that the sword has touched him paralyzes him when it, it he's moving in the same direction as her weapon, which means that all he would need to do is just move forward. So in that instance, my recommendation were if the choreography couldn't change, to have her change her line to be like duck next time or something like that. It would have been much better. If you'll notice, the very simple theme with this is that most of the fight actually doesn't need to be re-choreographed. It could be, but with the simple addition of moments that characterize the, the Numenorean recruits so that they are the focal point, and then using the choreography to show the progression of the recruits, now we can end the fight with them better than they started, which should be the entire point of a training sequence. That's the only way that that would make sense. And then you reinforce, you re-justify the fact that the training sequence is in there by calling back to what the characters learned later, where they are learning to use uh, the, the surroundings around them to trap their opponent's weapons. They're learning how to flank a single orc or something like that. Now, if I were to have complete control over, over writing this scene, and say we still wanted to have Galadriel help the Numenorians become better fighters for some reason. This is how I would do it. One, it wouldn't be happening in Numenor, because there's no reason for it to be happening in Numenor. In the books, the Numenorians find out, find out about Sauron without Galadriel telling them, so they can just go to Middle-earth first, and then Galadriel can meet them there. Now, when you have a person that wants to share their expertise, at first it has to be established that they have something to share that you want to know about and couldn't get anywhere else. Otherwise, there's no reason for you to listen to that person. So there can already be like a mock training battle happening, let's say 10 on 10 Numenorians. Uh, and all of them are already competent swordsmen 
and we can cut back and forth with that fight. But the scene is actually that Galadriel is talking to Elendil, who is overseeing the training. And he's he's calling out orders, and he thinks that everything is fine. And all of the soldiers think that everything is fine. This is a cakewalk for them. They're experienced veterans. But what Galadriel notices is that as this scrimmage begins, it's 10 on 10. And then the second that the bugle is, is blown, it immediately devolves into just one-on-one -on -one duels. And yeah, they're all really epic, but they're not fighting as a unit. And she comments on that to Elendil. And he's like... I don't see what the problem is. We've 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 never had an issue. And she says, may I speak to them? Because then that shows a bit of tact for Galadriel. Because there's no reason for him to offer for her to train the troops. She has to say, I have something that I think will help. May I speak to them? That's not subservience, but it is a, a, a level of mutual respect between these characters. Uh, and then she can go up and say, in the theater of war, there is no audience. Tell them that they need to rely on each other, that they are fellow soldiers for a reason, and that they have to learn how to fight as a unit. Because the way orcs fight is that they will outnumber you, and no man is an army. She tells them to fight again, and a couple of them get it, and they try to work together, and then there are the ones that don't think that it's an issue. They know that they're epic, uh, and they do just fine, and, and, and then that part of the fight ends. And she picks the one that's the most epic, like the tallest one, uh, the one that does think that he is an army. And she says, that was good. Fight all of them. And then we have the fight of multiples versus one, where it's this one really tall, really big, talented swordsman. He's maybe able to take a couple people out, but of course he's inevitably overpowered because he's fighting like 13 other people. Once that point is made, she tells them to go again. And it is Isildur who is fighting here that actually takes her message to heart, and he is able to rally his side and fight very effectively. There are zero casualties for his side in this scrimmage because they worked together. And then that lesson is learned, and it also is character development for Isildur. He is clearly a young captain and a young tactician who is capable of leading people and of learning new things and improving. And then that can be recalled upon later when they're fighting the orcs where before they were doing a fine job, but now they are just a, a well-oiled machine. And then it, it makes the advice that Galadriel gave them much more powerful because it has a tangible effect in the story. My friends, this video was actually very difficult to do because the solution is genuinely so simple. And yet it's super easy to, for me to get lost in just criticizing uh, the rings of power. And I, and I know that eventually that will become fatiguing and I don't want to contribute to that. So I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you were able to glean something new from it. I have a whole playlist of my sword related videos and some storytelling uh, videos here on the channel as well. So hope to see you there. And in the meantime, I'd like to wish you good luck on your adventures.